Today we're going to see 10 adult fantasy recommendations that are not from very popular authors. So you won't see here any Sanderson, any Rothfuss, no George R. R. Martin, no Robin Hobb. But nonetheless, all of these reads were five stars for me and I believe that you will love them. So let's start with the trilogy that I am truly obsessed and that it's The Greenbone Saga by Fonda Lee, the first book Jade City. This is so great for so many reasons and it's just like, ah. Oh. I'm so sad that I've already finished this trilogy. It is very character driven. It's this urban fantasy kind of like godfather story where we have two bands and these two bands fight for the control of the jade. Jade in this city, it's this weapon that allows certain people to wield magic. Everything is so well crafted. Fonda Lee has this ability of telling a story that it's so compelling and that allows you to care so so deeply for the characters. I just, I feel like I know these characters and there are just some scenes that are so sad, so heartbreakingly, beautifully well done. Oh, just really recommend this. And we will continue with another obsession and that is The Empire of the Wolf with the first book, The Justice of Kings. Now, this is an unconcluded series. And so I understand if you don't want to pick this up because you will need to wait a little bit to continue, but it is an amazing story and I feel this is talked more and more now on booktube which I am super happy about and this one it's a fairly dark story where we have this setting that it's very reminiscent to The Witcher so if you liked those vibes I think you will really enjoy this but then there's a thriller at its core and we will follow this character called Elena and she is the apprentice of this man he is an investigator but he He's also the just, the justice, everything. And he has this soft magic system, this power that conveys these characters as this word of truth. And so he has what it's called the voice of the emperor and she will be able to, you know, just convey truth from people. And so they will start to investigate, but things will turn super dark, super quickly. It's a complex book with characters that are nuanced, that are very gray. And I really believed that it was a hunting experience. I really, really loved it. First book felt super short. The second book, it's way different in terms of the setting, but I also really enjoyed it. And the magic system, everything about being the truth bearer, but also it deals with a death, which I am lately very fascinated about so really give this a try and talking about death we have the foxglove king which is a new release by hannah whedon she already concluded a duology last year the wilderwood duology and i really loved that however this one it got me obsessed other level. This book will be said in this Versailles kind of setting. But the great thing about this story is that the plot moves in a very good pace to me. It's not super fast, but at the same time, it has such a good blend of us getting to know the main characters, which although we are only going to see one point of view of our main girl, Lore, she will be surrounded by these two other characters. And therefore, we will be able to see how there's a lot of nuances. You don't really know what is happening. You will have your suspicions and this book will have you all the time wondering, like, what is happening here? And it was so fascinating to me because there's death magic. In this world, it seems that the gods lived and they're mainly two, the god of light and the god of darkness. And this is allowing certain people, as our main character, to wield what it's called mortem. And this is kind of like a death vibe. So this is quite a gothic book. And the story begins with our girl, who is a poison dealer necromancer taken as a spy and introduced into the prince court. There's a huge mystery that needs to be unraveled. You won't see who to trust, who don't. There's a love triangle there. There's tension. There's also a lot of progressive magic. This is the kind of book that I wanted to read, but I don't want it to read because I didn't want it to end. You know that feeling? And let's continue with the book that it's quite the opposite from this one with A River Enchanted. This is part of a duology called The Elements of Cadence. This is just so beautiful, so wicked 
whimsical, at the same time feels so mature. The main characters that we will be following are also mature, which really help in an adult fantasy story. And in here, we'll have just this beautiful environment within Scotland. And we'll have this isle that it's divided. And one of our main characters that we will follow, and we'll mainly follow for, will need to go back to this island because there's a mystery again that needs to be unraveled. There are girls disappearing. But the great thing about these is that the magic feels very unique. The taste that you'll see, it's just so, you know, it's th that kind of book that when you read, there are some phrases that you just want to reflect upon. It was to me very similar to the experience that I had reading The Song of Achilles, beautifully written. Then we move to another new release, and that is God Killer. This has, of course, a gorgeous book cover, and it's a book that it's super short, that it's very plot driven, that has characters that are very nuanced and that will keep you hooked because really the stakes matter and from the beginning our characters are placed in a situation that is very complicated and it touches topics that I found fascinating which are mainly gods living among the humans therefore we will have a lot of conversations of okay do we need those gods what are the limits to their sainthood or what are the limits to the powers we will follow three main points of view here. One of them is of a god killer, another one is of a, almost a child, and another one is of a god that cannot be killed, and he is the god of the white lies. So there's this thread of, okay, this is obviously not good, but it feels as an animal companion. It just, it's so vibrant. I started it reading it, and I was so compelled because the first part of the book is just so nah, really believe that you like it if you like plots that go pretty fast that have different points of view and that's not super clear who is good and who is bad in this story and we go now to the coziest of the books with legends and ladders now this is getting super popular in booktube for a reason it is an amazing cozy chilled read. It has been pitched as being high fantasy with low stakes and it is exactly that. You will follow this character that has a dream and that dream is to leave her warrior life behind and just open a coffee shop. As she does that, she will find different characters along the way and it will mainly be a story of she building that dream, fighting small things that will come her way, but there are a lot of comfy elements, like the characters are so charming, and although this is not the kind of story that will hunt you down and that will keep you awake at night, it's a story that it just will fulfill you, that it will just fill you with joy, with calm. It's great if you're reading longer series and you want something that it's a standalone that it's easy to get into it and that it just it just good vibes you know just good vibes but let's speed things up with daughter of the moon goddess which is one of the most fast paced books that i've read in my life lots of stuff happen so quickly that you will just need to keep reading and reading and reading. It seems that our girl has powers and she was living on the moon with her mom. One day those powers cannot be concealed anymore and as a result she will need to flee that place. However, things will unravel from that moment because it seems that her mom is in peril and our girl will need to infiltrate the celestial court and she will need to gain a place, a reputation there in order to get a boon from the emperor and therefore, you know, try and save her mom. This is for sure one of the most whimsical, best crafted settings that I've read in a while. This is the kind of book that you start because the premise is fantastic, that you continue because you want to understand what is happening and because things move but you end up savoring because of the setting how we will have these very rich lush celestial courts these different intrigues there's also a little bit of a love triangle in here but it's done in such a good way. And let's continue with an underdog, with the Winnowing Flame trilogy, with the first book, The Ninth Reign. This is a complex, but a good read. And let me explain. It is complex because we will follow different points of view and 
mainly they will leave in this world where there are a lot of unknowns and you won't know what is happening nor do their characters it's so unique there's a blend of fantasy and sci-fi in here in this world every now and then there's these wars called reigns but no one really remembers who are the enemies how to defeat them but the only thing that they know is that a new reign is coming therefore the challenge of our characters but everything is so very rich in this story and we will have different races one of those are these vampire elven creatures they were the only ones able to fight these enemies but now they have fallen to a terrible sickness and almost all of them are dying or dead and we'll follow one character of this race that is trying to run away from all of this rot then we have a witch and in here witches are able to convey magic fire and they are really kind of like slaves last but not least we will follow this noble woman who is on this path of figuring out what is happening in this land and the story unfolds from there and then we continue with Kaikei, a great standalone if you are looking for something a little bit different as well this is an indian retelling and it's kind of like what would happen if you follow the evil point of view and that evil character is Kaikei. it made me cry at times the audiobook it is fantastic this is a very character driven book and we will follow Kaikei over different stages of her life there is a thread of magic that I found really fascinating but it's really not a book that is heavy on that magic but she will discover very early on that she has the power to influence people all of her life she has lived believing in magic but her dad the king will have a different idea for her life and you know the story unfolds from there and last but not least we will conclude with a savage book with black sun this is again unconcluded there are two books out i've only read the first one but it is amazing the beginning will haunt you forever like if you I was a little bit squeamish maybe don't read this this is the kind of book that has a pace that it's super fast the stakes are incredibly high and we will move forward to this event throughout the whole book and that's the thing that to me always keep me hooked because we know that something will happen and that we are getting close to that moment we will follow different points of view and those points of view are in different places of this land and all of that made it so very political so rich this is set in the pre-columbian american civilization so it's also really different and at its core there's a story of this boy that believes himself to be a god and then this solar eclipse event that will happen in this sacred city of Tova. The story will unfold from there but I promise you you will be surprised you will be hooked and I really really recommend it and if you want to see more adult fantasy recommendations in this case made by you I'll drop here a video hoping you enjoy it.